booth here at Booth Brothers sitting on Matt's fat couch. No, Matt's Matt couch. couch. Matt's fat. Matt is a fat, I don't know, whatever they call it. Uh, apparently, I'm supposed to tell you that we have some new stuff coming up. We've been in the studio recording two brand new albums. One is completed, it's being printed now, so that'll come out soon. Next one is a mainline album, which is going to be uh, a couple, what, Jim, a couple months still? Yes. Four. Yeah, and um, can't give all the details, but we're going to be shooting a video this summer, which will come out in the fall. So, a lot of great things coming. And the website, yes. Right here, are you going to put that down there? Uh, boothbrothers.com. That's not high tech. Or is it, or is it Booth? Yeah. Booth Brothers. You're on the couch with Matthew Fouch. Yeah. You're in the Fouch Show. Hey there. Thank you for joining us on the couch with Fouch. And today I am with Ronnie Booth of the Booth Brothers. Now we are in Clayton, Ohio. It is right outside of Dayton. We're here for a Jubilee concert tonight. And for those of you who do not know, Jubilee concert consists of Legacy 5, the Booth Brothers, and Greater Vision all together in concert. And we have a great time. Tonight, we are in the back lounge of the Booth Brothers bus. So thank you, Ronnie, for letting us use your back lounge for this oh, video. I'm glad to have you, man. We are uh, looking forward to some great questions here. Uh, there's been some, well, been some great questions from the folks on social media they want to know a whole lot about you but first off before I get to the social media questions why don't you give everybody just kind of your your story you know how you got into music and I'm sure a lot of people know but for those who don't know you know, give them your story how you got into music and then uh, and then go right into telling everybody about your family okay sure well my father Ron Singer uh, sang gospel music uh, started uh, with the original Booth Brothers in the 50s uh, he and my Uncle Charles, my Uncle Jim, and my Uncle Wallace had a quartet. And uh, Uncle Jim went in the Army, and uh, it wasn't long after that that uh, Dad was invited to sing tenor for the Tony Brothers. So Dad joined the uh, Tonys in the uh, early 60s, sang with them through 67, and got a call from John Matthews of the Rebels Quartet from Tampa, Florida. So Dad took that job. Dad was 23 years old. Uh, Mom was... 25 and I was two <laughs> and um, so anyhow the family he moved the family down there he sang with the rebels for uh, for seven years went with the Thrasher brothers then uh, in 76 went with JD and the stamps backing up Elvis uh, the year before Elvis died for a short wow. period of time and um, that's my that's where the musical background begins uh, first of all with my dad and with my uncle Charles and uh, and the rebels and Tonys um, when he went with Elvis, um, we still have the actual records that the Stamps sent Dad oh, to learn some of awesome. these songs on. And uh, I played those things, I mean, you know, because I, I had heard of the Elvis Presley and I knew that he was this big star, but, uh, but I really enjoyed it. And Michael really fell in love with uh, Ron, Ronnie Tut, Elvis's drummer. And uh, so we listened to that pretty extensively for a couple of years and that really made an impact on us. And, down in Tampa, uh, Tampa Bay area, there wasn't a lot of gospel music. Now, especially when you went into the 80s, uh, I mean, it was around there some, but we didn't, we weren't exposed to it because Dad came off the road in '77. So we were, we were listening to, you know, Tampa is. There's so many different styles that are played: blues, jazz, you know, pop, and all country music. And uh, we just started listening to all of that, you know, uh, and. Really, that's what the Booth Brothers are, it is an amalgamation, I guess is the word I'm trying to come up with, of all these different musical ideas. And uh, only we're singing, using those ideas, and promoting our faith, which is in the Lord Jesus. Right. And uh, that's kind of the background. Uh, awesome. Some huge influences on me were, uh, uh, of course, my dad, my uncle, Jim Hamill. Uh, he was Uncle Jim you know, to, to me. The Couriers were big, uh, the Stamps, the Thrasher Rose, all those guys. In the in the second market um, was a guy named Gary Morris, who was the original cut of You Are the Wind Beneath My Wings. came out in 82. Larry Gatlin, huge, huge fan of Larry Gatlin. Um, and a guy named Steve Warner, uh, another country artist. I just love their, and Dwayne Allen, uh, the lead singer of the Oak Ridge Boys. Those four voices just, they were so... They, they just had so much um, music in their voices 
And then there was others in the in the pop music uh, that really influenced me. And again, all these the things that used to move me from each one of those singers, I just tried to adapt and make it my own. Right. And uh, and it, you know it's it's a uh, it's really been very beneficial for the Booth Brothers because in a way it's given us our own thing, you mm -hmm. know, because we can't sing high. We're not, we can't, it's just God didn't make us for that. So we had to find another way. You, you guys know? are your own, in a way, a lot of the stuff you guys do, you guys are just kind of like your own, I, I, I guess, own style of gospel yeah, music, really, you know, nobody can really put you in any certain style. I mean, you guys yeah. do a little bit of everything and that's nice to have a, a broad base of different it is. Uh, it is, and 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 I attribute that again to where we where we grew up. Uh, we just we love good music, and as long as it's as long as it's wholesome, uh, then I enjoy it. You know, I'm not going to listen to something that is not uh, Christ exalting. Right. Uh, but uh, anyhow, that's the background. Cool. Now tell us, uh, tell everybody about your family, your kids, and your wife, and. Um, yeah. Just let well, my wife, uh, uh, my wife's name is Kim, and she's my soulmate. Cool. Absolutely, my soulmate. We have four children. We have uh, my stepdaughter Amy uh, is married to Michael John, and they have Harper, and Harper is my granddaughter, and she is uh, 19 months at the time we're filming this. Uh, Jonathan, my stepson, and his wife Emily, uh, they're married, and they uh, no kids yet. Uh, Ronnie Lee, my oldest son, is married to Lydia, and uh, no kids yet. Uh, he's in the real estate in Nashville and just and oh, doing wow. great. And then Daniel's my youngest, and uh, and Daniel is getting ready to go to school to become a fireman. Cool. And he is uh, Daniel's 20 years old. He's our baby. So uh, it is the house is empty and it's so quiet, and we're we're still trying to get used to that. Right. You know when I've I've been singing for so many years now and I'd come home the kids were so young and then I'd go out and play baseball with them and whatnot and they don't want to play baseball with that now. <laughs> <laughs> Got a lot more things on their plate. A lot now. more things on the plate so yeah. it's just Kim and I. Now speaking of empty house I know that your wife does some different things. If you want to mm -hmm. tell everybody about kind of I've seen some some cards and some photos online yeah. so tell everybody a little bit about what she does. Well about three years ago she she's always wanted to get into photography. She's always appreciated and had a passion for photography so I said well you know what I said we're gonna set you up and I got her the equipment and um, and all the things that she needed and I'm telling you she has a beautiful eye for, especially for nature she loves I take her over to Cades Cove you know over in the, around Pigeon Forge that area and then just other outside sh shots that she has taken and we've taken some of those pictures and not only have we framed them but we've also made note cards out of them Oh, nice. And the people are really taken to those things, and they're blank inside, so uh, you can write whatever message you want. And uh, and there are various kinds there's, uh, of of nature, um, and it's really it's been pretty neat. Her uh, KimBooth.com is her okay. website. KimBooth.com. Uh, yeah. You can get those. And uh, that's her. It's her ministry, and she will take Bible verses or or well. Um, well-crafted quotes or whatnot and apply it to the picture that she has and you know what it really does minister right it really there's something like you can be have you can be so stressed out and you see a picture of nature and the calmness of it and the order and everything and it just reminds you no the Lord is in control yeah. whether you feel it or you don't he is well you know when God created it he said it, it's good yeah, absolutely. you know so absolutely. You, you just have to look a lot of people just you know just look around at creation and oh yeah you can just see the goodness of Absolutely. God and how how awesome he is very much so very much that's pretty cool so check those out go to her website give them a look if you like them go ahead and purchase a few and maybe brighten somebody's day <laughs> so let's get to the social media questions oh okay the first one I want to get to is it's not even a question that I'm going to ask you per se because there were multiple questions on this subject, so I'm just going to throw the subject out there to begin with. Okay. The obvious one that several people asked about was you dealing with your brother Michael. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
just you know, <laughs> you know, watch it tell everybody expound on, on on that subject of getting along, dealing with, growing up with Michael. Just real kind of short, you know, short form. I know, sure. I'm sure there's tons, but just kind of short. Form oh yeah, there's some good stories. That. Well, I'm six years older than Michael. Uh, I was born in '65. He was born in uh, in '61 or '71, excuse me. And uh, it, <laughs> Michael, growing up, actually was very pudgy. He was, you know, he's as thin as can be now. But growing up, he was. I nicknamed him Porky. Really? Uh, I didn't and know I that. wasn't trying to. And I wasn't being mean. I just. It was just. I thought it was a, a neat little nickname. Yeah. And and I never meant anything by it. And and. Uh, and so as he as he grew up, I'm again I'm six years older, and I was on the wrestling team in high school. I'm in a headlock and then just roll him over and pin him or, or the leg shoot or whatever. <laughs> he said he learned how to sing tenor by screaming. Mom! <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I was awesome. never, I've never heard from him, but I'll tell you what. All jokes aside, Michael, uh, there's a very serious side to Michael. And when we're on the bus, there's I mean we'll joke around, we'll have fun like everybody. But he's not bouncing off the walls like people. Right. right. No. Michael is. Uh, Michael uses the humor. Uh, he's in control of the humor, yeah. if you will. And, and humor is a wonderful thing. It came from the Lord. And you know what? Some people haven't laughed in a long time. Right. And uh, so, anyhow, it's a great thing to have. Cool. Cool. Well, I mean, I know everybody enjoys his personality. You know, on stage, enjoys talking to him off stage, as well as talking to you. And so, it's really neat. You know, just the. The, the brotherhood, you know, and everything oh, yeah. that you guys have. Um, so that's just a really neat factor that a lot of groups don't get. You know, a lot of groups don't have that family connection, right? Especially right. with brothers. You know, sometimes there's even a tighter bond oh, yeah. between brothers than just maybe a brother and a sister. You know? So that's that's Absolutely. that's cool to have that. So that, that's really neat. Um, the next section, I want to go to some musical questions that people have. Okay. So my first question here is from Eric Eldridge, and he would like to know. Um, these are kind of just shorter, you know, right to the point, okay. like say, yeah, kind of short answers. Okay. Um, how old were you when you learned to sing harmony? Oh, uh, to sing harmony. I mean, I was, uh, I'm going to say around nine or ten, uh, I think is when I really started discovering harmony. Uh, I had been singing since I was a toddler, and just nah, yeah, yeah, along with Dad's records. But right. when I was five, the Rebels had their own television show, and I sang the night before Easter's with the Rebels Quartet back in the up. And that thing had—it was my Dad's arrangement. It had four key changes in it, and wow. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just because I listened so much to my Dad's records. But harmony, probably nine or ten. That's pretty cool. I started understanding. Pretty young it. too. Yeah, I mean, Seems like. well, music was my world. Right, and it still is. So Rob Bronk, thank you for your question. He would like to know what is your best vocal tip? If it's hurting, it's wrong. That's a good one. Don't push. Shane Gray would like to know who is your musical hero? Oh gosh. First and foremost, my father. And uh, and, and equally my uncle, Charles Booth. Cool. Great singers. Marcus Bradley. He wants to know this one's he wants to know how you put the ooh in smooth. <laughs> well, I tell you what, there there is a no, don't push, just don't push, and it's almost uh, it's almost a whoo like you're blowing. Uh, whoo, um, it's hard to explain. Uh, just don't Relax. push. And, you know what? The more relaxed, yeah. the better you are. And that's for bass singing too. I mean, it's just a lot of oh, times absolutely. guys will tell you. You know, if you're having problem, if you if there's a note that you can normally hit, but for some reason you're having problems with it, just try your best to relax. There you go. And just let it, just kind of let it flow. You know, absolutely, it'll come a little bit easier. So it will. It absolutely will. Next section is some Booth Brothers, just general questions. Okay. <laughs> so, Tom Poe would like to know when will you do another Gaither CD, or will you? I don't know. Uh, we had an idea of a songwriter series that we wanted to start, and we started with Bill. In 24 years of singing, we had recorded one Bill Gaither song. Wow. I don't know why. It, we never planned it that way. So we, we thought, well, let's start with Bill and Gloria. And, you know, there we did the one volume. Well, there's enough to do two or three more volumes, you know, mm -hmm. of, of them. And right. then you've got Mosey Lister, then you got Squire, then you right. got... So there's a plethora of music out there, you know, that uh, we're considering doing. And we may in, in the future. Maybe in the future. Maybe. Maybe. 
Um, Ruth Hybert would like to know, when are you going to hire a bass singer? <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of people don't know. When we started out, we were a quartet. I don't think I knew that either. A guy named Tim Seaver, who played piano for the Rebels back in the early 70s, actually a dear friend of the family's, Tim played piano and sang bass for us when we started out. Cool. Like, I've got video footage nice. of the first time we sang together. You need to share that. I know it, I know. That One of these fun. days we're going to, that we sang eight songs in our home church. That's neat. And you know what? It wasn't bad. I mean, it really wasn't. So, so maybe a bass encouraged. singer is in your future again. Well, you never know. <laughs> it's another paycheck, man. Yeah, right, that's true. That's true. Um, let's see. Nathan Mack would like to know, how is it decided which person sings which solo? Honestly, that it... Does it just come down to the producing or producer? Yeah, and pretty much that's me and that's uh, Michael and I and Jim we'll just talk about the lyric or whatever and whichever voice you know that's a, that is the one thing I can honestly say there is no competition between the three of us guys I mean whoever is going to be able to deliver that message mm -hmm. most effectively that's who does it you know and and we truly and Jim even and we sing a lot of Jim's songs that he has written mm -hmm. but it's like Jim says man I don't just because I wrote it doesn't mean I have to sing it all so really whoever communicates it, it's that simple you know Julie Sinning has asked the next question, and she would like to know, what is your favorite thing to do on a day off? Honestly, I love, I love to read and, uh, it, and try to clear my mind and get out in nature. I love working outside uh, when I'm home. My wife, my wife and I have a few acres, and, uh, and I love getting out and getting dirty and sweating and working around the yard, believe it or not. Cool. Doesn't bother me a bit. Well, you know what, Ronnie? Now it's time for the Fouch Zone. I don't know if you've ever seen the Fouch Zone before. I've never seen that. These questions You're are just right. quick hitters, man. And actually, thank you to Joseph Baldwin, the merchandise specialist for the Booth Brothers, for submitting these questions. So thank you, Joseph. Here we are. He's you ready? Praise, he? When did Christopher Columbus realize he was in for a long trip? Time. A long time ago. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Time. Still looking. <laughs> if the Booth Brothers was made into a musical, who'd play you? Oh gosh. <laughs> Time. <laughs> what is track number two on the Eagles album, Hotel California? Oh, Life in a Fast Lane. Wow. <laughs> and if you could play a TV character, who would it be? Honestly, Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> Oh, that would be cool. I would. <laughs> Thank you so much there. for joining me today, man. Bless you, man. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us. It was so much fun. Thanks, guys. <laughs> and uh, we we'll look to see you guys out there. Give everybody the your guys' website where they can get your music. www.boothbrothers.com. That's Very it. cool. And join me at mattfouch.com. See the videos, podcasts, everything we got going on. So thanks so much. We'll see you next time. You're on the couch with Matthew Fouch. Yeah. You're in the frozen